Why is it whenever I start recording, that's immediately when a plane starts flying over? <laughs> Hi everyone, I just wanted to make a fun video today, so I thought I would do another tag, and I'm going to do Jasmine's literary fiction book tag. Um, this is an original tag she created, so I'll put a link to her video below, and uh, and all the, the questions that she asks, the prompts that she asks in this tag, um, which I think are really good. And I'm really glad that she made this tag, because it's a question that I've been grappling with recently of like like well what do we mean when we say literary fiction and I always have this problem I don't know if you ever had this issue too that whenever I meet somebody for the first time in person and we get to chatting about interests and stuff and if it comes up that I'm reading they'll ask me oh well what sort of books do you like reading and I don't really know how to answer except for contemporary literary fiction um, but then I, I don't I always feel a bit uncomfortable saying that because what do does that really mean and it always there's always um, a slight pretentiousness that feels like it's attached to that like I'm being slightly snobbish like, like oh I don't just read romance novels or mystery novels no I read literary fiction um, so I'm really glad that she made this tag so we can ask ourselves what this means and what are the parameters that that make a literary fiction novel and what are some examples of it so the first question is uh, how do you define literary fiction and I thought that Jasmine did give a really good answer to this uh, when she uh, said uh, that it's fiction that has a focus a focus focus on on uh, language and character and an exploration of the human condition uh, with less emphasis on plot and uh, and I really liked how Claire when she um, made this tag video how she added on to that and she's focused on this issue of form and how uh, literary fiction really works outside of a set formula. It feels like every literary fiction novel is making its own rules in a way um, and that it focuses a lot more on excellent writing and thematic texture and nuanced characters. Um, and I also liked uh, how um, Matthew Sharapa answered, he, he didn't an make this tag video but in another tag video um, when asked what uh, genre he's read most this year, he said depressing contemporary literary adult fiction. And this is like something that always comes up when um, we talk about literary fiction is that it tends to be more depressing and that does seem to be a trait um, that, that naturally comes along with literary fiction. And I think there is a reason for that because genre fiction, uh, not always, but often, uh, tends to aim to produce more of a feeling of escapism, I think, whereas literary fiction tries to provide some sort of social commentary or political criticism, um, which inevitably does end up making it a bit more depressing. And I know that this is a very broad characterization that there's many examples sort of outside of this. And I think Alex um, from his booktube channel, uh, What Page Are You On?, uh, made a very good point as well that he doesn't think that literary fiction does need to be explicitly political or give some sort of social commentary in order to be culturally important. So it is a complex issue and we could debate about it endlessly, um, but uh, I, I would like to add one more thing which isn't really about the form of literary fiction I guess but more an effect of it, um, which I, I think is, um, which nobody's really raised yet and that's about the economics of literary fiction versus genre fiction and it's an interesting point that the um, speculative fiction writer Neil Stevenson made when talking about the difference between genre fiction and literary literary fiction is that genre fiction writers, if they are successful, um, are more apt to be able to fully support themselves in just their writing, in the books that they produce and um, the, the royalties they receive from those books, whereas literary fiction writers quite often have to supplement their income uh, by taking an academic job or teaching writing or receiving grants or doing some other job um, that might not even be related to the book world uh, to, in order to you know, support themselves and get on because really a lot of even um, quite like successful award-winning uh, literary fiction writers aren't able to fully support themselves just 
from the writing that they do, you know, I think really there's only a handful that are able to do this. And I, I haven't seen sales figures. I don't know this totally, but, but I think this does really tend to be the case. And I think a reason for this is because publishers are able to support writers of genre fiction over multiple books because if they are successful and they they create an audience they they are able to produce multiple books and that's why there's so many more series in genre fiction than um, there are in literary fiction although of course there are some exceptions to that and I'm going to talk about those in a minute of where there can be series in literary fiction as well so in in genre fiction you know you'll there'll be a detective or a fantastic land that a author can keep returning to again and again to provide another story and another adventure um, to go back to and um, and this produces a lot less risk for publishers who are who know that that there'll probably be an audience for this whereas literary fiction writers usually each book there it's you know creating wholly a new uh, a totally different kind of story so just to add another little thing I think it is interesting to think about the economics when we're talking about definitions of literary fiction um, as well so uh, number two um, she asks name a literary fiction novel with a brilliant character study and for this I want to say uh, Sri Hustvet's novel The Blazing World where uh, we have the central character of Harriet Burden and I want to offer this specifically as an alternative to um, Rachel Cusk's uh, novel Outline and, and that series of novels um, which um, I've only read Outline and, and I thought it was really interesting but I think you know she's not the only author that's working in um, with this sort of idea because um, the, the central character of The Blazing World, Harriet Burden, we don't often get her direct voice in this novel. We often get her perspective from a series of other characters' perspectives. So Harriet Burden is an artist and she believes that, um, with good reason, that the art world is uh, quite sexist and, and more prejudiced to um, uh, to female uh, artists than male artists and to prove this point she makes a very elaborate experiment where she creates a number of art pieces um, but attributes them to male artists and she convinces these male artists to come forward and take credit for them and these male artists become very uh, famous. So we get these male artists perspective on it and we get um, some critics perspectives on these art pieces and we, we do get some pieces of her voice in journals and stuff but um, but I, I like how it creates this this picture of a, of a person, of a character who is really struggling with this sense of identity and trying to navigate her way as a woman in the world, as a female artist in the world and what that means and uh, and I thought it was so powerfully done um, and really interesting how she created this structure to make this character study because quite often you know when we think about a novel with a strong character study it's usually in a first person voice very confessional somebody talking from the heart telling their whole story whereas you know this approaches a character from many different perspectives and also I want to point out one other novel and um, and I hope you admire my restraint in this because I could answer every single one of these questions with a Joyce Carol Oates novel but I'm not going to do that so uh, so I hope I get props for, for, for doing that but I'm going to mention a couple of Joyce Carol Oates novels because She's my favorite writer, and I think she is the most supreme literary fiction writer working today. So, um, so you know, I'm going to do my cheerleading for Joyce Carol Oates again. And um, as a brilliant character study, pick her novel Zombie, um, which is a very depressing novel uh, because it's all about a serial killer and told from that serial killer's point of view. But she makes such an interesting challenge in writing this novel because it's... Um, uh, so the serial killer is a Jeffrey Dahmer type character um, who uh, engages in, in a number of sexual relationships with men and young men but is a serial killer and who seeks to lobotomize these men and in that way keep them for himself for all time and uh, but of course he doesn't really he's not really um, a, a doctor or a scientist um, he doesn't really know what he's doing so often these men die and what's interesting about how she writes this novel is that she she thinks of him as a character that doesn't necessarily think in language who thinks more in imagery and symbols and so it's really interesting to 
to read um, prose which tries to emulate that experience. And so I think uh, genre fiction, you know, would just write the story of a sailor, serial killer and really, you know, villainize him. Whereas Joyce Carroll tries to sympathetically show his perspective while acknowledging that obviously everything he does is uh, horrendous and so awful and terrifying, uh, but at, at the same time giving such a different perspective on him and recognizing that though he's a ser serial killer doing all these uh, atrocious things that he is human as well. Question three is name a literary fiction novel that is experimental or unique writing and I, I have to say George Saunders' Lincoln in the Bardo um, which is the the story of Abraham Lincoln going into a graveyard to mourn his uh, young son who has died and uh, and this has the most unique form of writing so quite a lot of it takes place as the form of dialogue, a kind of, kind of script dialogue of a number of the deceased persons in the, the graveyard, um, but then other sections of it are, are more non-fiction accounts of, uh, of around the time period and um, people in Abraham Lincoln's life and um, providing um, political commentary. And some of this, uh, these, these like sort of journalistic um, accounts or um, letters are, are made up and some of them are actual, you know, taken from um, historical sources. And so, and, and so it's quite unique in how it, it, um, it mixes up and blends um, fact and fiction as well as like prose fiction and this dialogue to told as a, a script form of writing and is just so emotional and powerful and wild and surreal and and uh, yeah I, I couldn't stop talking about this novel because uh, I think it's so brilliant and really well deserved the booker. <laughs> Question four is name a literary fiction novel with an interesting structure and for this I'm not just going to say one novel but a series which is Ali Smith's seasonal quartet uh, which which isn't complete yet because only three novels in the series have been published. Um, Summer will come out next year and that'll be the last in the series. And what's so interesting about the, the structure of this is that there's an overarching structure to it and she's sort of made a, a form for each novel, but each novel is unique in itself. And so, so each novel uh, sort of plays upon a, a Dickens novel and directly references that. Um, each novel has within it its own um, story that's self-contained within that novel, but, but there's also an overarching story um, over the whole series and um, continuing characters, and we haven't seen the full story of that yet, uh, but, um, but how she is building this, this much larger story within it. Each novel uh, references a relatively obscure or forgotten female artist, and each novel is providing uh, political commentary on our current times, and doing that as in almost as real time as possible and the, so the public publishing schedule for these novels is much shorter than other novels uh, because she, she's writing these novels and within a few weeks or a month of submitting the manuscript they're being published and so um, she's writing about our current time and referencing things which which happened within the past year and capturing that within her story and usually the turnaround time for novels after a writer has submitted that novel to a publisher is nine months you know the sort of joke is that a book is like a baby and it takes nine months for it to come out whereas with Ali Smith you know it'll come out only a few weeks after um, she's, she's finished writing it um, which is really extraordinary and shows you know that her publisher has that much faith in her that that what she's going to deliver is going to be really quality. So I think it's only because she's such a well-established writer and has such a good rapport with their publisher that she's able to do this. But I but it's it's really interesting how how it's you know this form of literary fiction which is really trying to capture our current time period as it's happening in that way that Christopher Isherwood sort of did with with his um, book Goodbye to Berlin where he was writing about about uh, how Berlin was being taken over by the Nazis as it was happening. Question five is name a literary fiction novel that explores social themes and for this I'm going to say a novel I've talked about in book tag videos before which is The Parcel by Anash Arani and I'm going to talk about this novel again because I do think it is so 
brilliant. Although, if you want to talk about depressing literary fiction, this is one of the most depressing novels I have ever read, um, but also one of the most moving. Um, so the, it, it's about the, the central character of Madhu, um, who is a hijra, um, um, which is a, a community in India who are made up of intersex and transsexual individuals. And one of the things about um, hijras are, are that they are sort of paradoxically uh, revered and reviled within their communities. And, um, and so they find it very difficult to find a, a place within um, society. And one of the only things that, that hijras can do in order to make a living is either to just beg, explicitly beg in the streets, or to become a prostitute. And, um, and Madhu is a particularly interesting, complex character because one of Madhu's duties is to take children who have been sold by their families into an enslaved state of child prostitution and to try to psychologically break these children in order to prepare them for this new enslaved life that they, they're, they're going to live. And, and that is terrifying and horrible and you want to immediately condemn it from the outside but then when you see Madhu's perspective you see the complexities of this and of course it is still wrong and, and horrible and, um, and, and, it, and it sort of shows that over the course of the novel but it shows how there are a lot more nuances and yeah difficulties and complexities to this situation than first appears and I would say just in case you're absolutely terrified to go into such dark subject matter that the end of this novel is somewhat hopeful and it is sort of ultimately inspiring I think and uh, so yeah and this is just such a great novel that I wish more people would read. Question six is name a literary fiction novel that explores the human condition and for this I'm gonna say Eleanor Catton's novel The Luminaries another very well-deserved Booker winner and I think this is an interesting novel because it is a novel which makes a very elaborate, extensive plot, um, as well as exploring the human condition in such a profound and moving way because it does explore issues uh, like deceit and greed and ambition uh, and familial strife and the reinvention of self and desire. There's a lot in it about desire as well as being this really interesting, um, engaging, heavily plotted novel that's about seafaring adventures and prostitution and the opium trade and hidden adventures and swapped identities and really wacky seance that, that occur. Um, so it's about all these things while, while having this very elaborate structure that um, she's constructed for this novel, very particular structure um, that also says something overarching about the human condition and how we might or might not be swayed by astrology and sort of outside forces that control our character and actions in addition to having free will and yeah I think it's just one of the most brilliant novels of recent years. Question number seven is name a brilliant literary hybrid genre novel and um, for that I'm, I'm gonna say another Joyce Carroll's novel. I'm gonna say um, her novel Mysteries of Winterthorn which is the the first novel I read by Joyce Carroll Oates that really turned me on to a writer and convinced me that wow this is a really brilliant writer and this novel is part of a whole series of books that she wrote um, which aren't explicitly connected to each other by plot or character but are part of this overall literary experiment she tried to do in the 80s, a very elaborate literary experiment over the course of five novels, where she tried to take America's most popular genres and um, construct out of them a experiment um, to, to make them into literary fiction novels as well. And so this novel, Mysteries of Winterthorn, I have this um, very um, self-important looking leather bound edition which is part of the the Franklin Library um, series which I think is, is a bit almost like too like sort of ostentatious and how it's it's like leather and with gold trimming and um, though I think it is still very pretty but I like it particularly because um, the authors for these series write introductions to this and so in her introduction to this um, Joyce Carol talks about how she's um, this is a sort of 
self-conscious like postmodern experiment that she's doing. Um, but also there's these really lovely uh, illustrations made throughout it. And so the, um, the central character of this is a detective and, um, and who's exploring this mystery. And there is a specific mystery that he's exploring. Um, it's a very gothic novel with a lot of ghosts and, and vampires, and, um, but, but also um, but murder and intrigue um, within a small community. And he's exploring the, the case of this, but also sort of exploring um, the mystery of the human condition. And I don't have a copy of the, the proper first um, edition of this, so I'm gonna put a, a picture of it up there because um, I think the, the cover of that is really beautiful as well. But I think it is so fascinating how in this these series of books she, she is consciously playing with genre um, to, to play with form and make it something different, trying to work within the constraints of the, the genre of how it should be plotted and the effects that it's supposed to make, um, as well as saying something much bigger about society and America in general. And then I also have to mention, because we're talking about literary genre hybrid novels, is Marlon James' most recent novel, Black Leopard, Red Wolf, which I'm sure everyone is well aware is, is a, a fantasy novel as well as being a literary fiction novel that sort of plays upon this, this genre of fantasy um, that involves a lot of adventures, a sort of band of adventurers that go on a mission, um, but also are unearthing all these things about um, African history and African mythology, but it's also saying something much larger about the human condition. And I know not everybody agrees, but I love this novel. And finally, question eight is, what genre do you wish mixed uh, with literary fiction more? And it's sort of difficult to answer because I sort of wish in a way that I was more daring and would read more really good uh, examples of genre fiction. And I feel like in a way it's, it's um, you know, I, I talked early on about this issue of when I talk about literary fiction, it seems a sort of snobbery thing that I, and it's not that I don't want to read genre fiction, but it's more just that I don't know what are some of the best examples of it. And so when occasionally I've tried to dip into reading, you know, a really traditional like mystery novel or a fantasy novel, I've been a bit um, disappointed and, and frankly just got a bit bored with how it's written. And I think it's not so much a, a sort of snobbery issue, but it's more an issue that um, I'm, aware that I have a limited amount of time to read and um, and so I want to read only really good things and I know just that with literary fiction I'm more likely um, to really enjoy the experience of what I'm reading than if I just picked up a genre novel so I think it's maybe more on me that I should try to branch out and read more genre fiction though if I'm gonna answer and this question as, as it's been asked and say what I wish mixed genre fiction with literary fiction more, it would be graphic novels. And I think there probably are a lot of great examples of graphic novels that I'm not aware of. And, and I have read um, Nick Dernasso's um, no graphic novel, Sabrina, um, which was because it was long listed for the Booker Prize last year. And I thought it was brilliant. I w really would like to read more by this author and more books like this. And and I know it was very controversial that there was a graphic novel on the list, but I think it did deserve to be there and, and did show that, you know, in a graphic novel, you can do things which um, you really can't do in language because it shows in these pictures a lot of emptiness and, you know, there's, there's a lot of bits which don't have dialogue in it and it's showing how, you know, there are things which can't be said in language and I got an effect and feeling and a meaning from this which I wouldn't get from just reading ordinary prose fiction and so um, so yeah I would like to read a lot more graphic novels but I think like I mentioned before you know with graphic novels there's more high risk to because they tend to be more expensive because they're more expensive to publish and and um, and the reading experience of it it tends to be quite short it's a lot shorter than reading something like the luminaries um, so um, so yeah I would like a lot more mixture of literary fiction with graphic novels and if you have suggestions of great graphic novels please let me know because I would like to read more of them 
So, um, so that's it for this tag. And in terms of tagging people, um, there are a few people I would like to tag because I'd be really interested to know their answers. I mean, a number of booktubers who I would tag have already done this tag. And so, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I would like to tag Matthew Schroff because I would be really interested to know his answers as well as um, Laura Frey. I'm really keen to know her answers to this and um, Mel's Bookland Adventures, um, Dee Dee from Brown Girl Reading, um, Jacqueline from Six Minutes for Me, and Charlotte from Tired Mama Tries to Read. Um, so yeah, I'd really be keen to know all of your answers to this, but, but um, whoever wants to do this tag, let me know if you do do it or if you want to answer in the, um, the comments below your, your answers to this, because yeah, I'd like to get some more good recommendations. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for watching and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.